Okay, we're back in the rose garden again on the uh, on another section of roses. These are the knockouts, the carpet roses, uh, earth kind roses. These things kind of grow up somewhat shrubby, bushy. This is one that's not been trimmed. Uh, this is one we did the other day, the traditional way of trimming with the hand pruners, uh, the small loppers on this one. We've trimmed this one out like you would a hybrid tea. Now this is a, a this is kind of an intense way of pruning these roses. And so we've done the same thing. We've opened it up. But again, you got to realize that these kind of roses don't have a main frame like hybrid teas, grandifloras, and floribundas. These are not going to have the bird nest effect, per se. They're, they're, these have been bred for a shrubby, really close to the ground, lots of flush of growth. When you look at this bush right here, you're seeing what I'm talking about. There's twigs everywhere on this bush. And so these make a very florific uh, bloom production. They're very showy. That's what you're looking for, that carpet effect of blooms. So I'm going to move from this rose bush here that's got the traditional. I've thinned it out. I've cut it back. But I'm going to show you a different way of trimming these, uh, these shrub roses. And, and I said, you're going to ask me, well, why is he going to use the, the hedge whackers? This is the real simple way of doing these. And... You know, I'm not looking to be real precise on cuts. I'm not looking, to, I'll get back and look at it for broken branches, uh, something that's got some, some damage on it from, uh, you know, maybe two running together and, and got open wounds. But I'm gonna start, you know, and again, when we're trimming roses, we wanna cut all of the blooms out eventually. When we cut the blooms back in the growth cycle uh, in the summertime, this is the last of the fall. My workers here on the campus keep these kind of cut, but these are the these were the tail flowers of the season. And so we have the old blooms and we have rose hips. Now for some of you out there that like to drink rose hip tea, this is it right here. This is in, you know, you gotta realize that roses are in the apple family, or the rose the apples in the rose family. I'll say it backwards here. And that's actually an apple. Little miniature apple. And so you would use that if you're into the to the herbal type stuff. And you can make teas, and you buy teas with this already in it. So um, I like to can. I'm just giving you a little bit extra information here about the rose bush. But if I wanted to get real down and dirty, I'd grow a lot of these roses, and I would do rose hip jelly. So there's another thing to throw out there for you. <clears throat> but I'm going to start trimming. And you're going to go, oh, me, it's going to kill it, you know, but this is going to be it. So you get in here, you're going to have to whack on them. I'm getting kind of, I may have to use these others, but they're not this as good as that one. I'm changing gears. You see, these are really thicker, so I'm going to have to go in and do, but you can use all these smaller twigs on the top. You can use this and cut into them. And so I'm just taking all that stuff out. Gonna put some muscle behind it. Well, this is something for your husband to do, or your yard man. So if you're trimming, might ruin my husband's golf swing. David. Yeah, it could. Okay, now that's the, that's that right there is the shell. I'm going to use that as a foundation. Now I'm going to go back with the with the hand pruners. We'll leave that one, and we'll come back uh, later in the season, and we'll take a cross shot of these two, how one looks and how the other one looks, okay? But now what I'll go back to the end to see, oh, this one here I'm give out. I've <laughs> uh, got my workout for the morning. But you see we got a long cane here that's grown out into the next rose bush, and this is not what we want. So I'm going to come back in, I'm going to remove this cane. Because I don't want it growing into the other one. I want each individual plant to have its yeah, own yeah. growing sprays. So I'm taking out a fairly good section of it. And when you trim it like this, and I'll go back in up here at the top and bring it back in just a little bit more. I'm kind of a perfectionist. I want to do something the way I like to see it. In my, I'm doing these like I, grew, I would do them in my own home yard for Lake County. This is why I prune and trim in on that. So this is what I'm showing you. I'm not going to be real concerned about the uh, eyes because these things have got eyes all over everywhere. I'm looking for them as, as I'm making a cut 
in everything. So I'm just kind of giving it a trim up, uh, like a haircut. Take a little off the side, a little off the top, and I'm trimming out some of the old bloom wood. Cause it's not going to do anything. It's just trash on the on the rose bush. So cutting all them old stems out, and I'm going to cut that back there. Then I'm looking for branches that are going to grow, like this branch right here. It's going to continue growing into this branch. So I want to take that one out. I want it to come up on this one here. And I'm cutting back to a bud on that one. Anybody got any questions while I'm trimming? Okay, you said you could make rose hip jelly? Yes. Okay, can you still make that jelly even though you've been putting uh, an herbicide? Uh, not on this. Not with the herbicide. It's a good question. Good point. If you're going to do that, you don't want to use the, the bare rose food I just showed you because you're going to be eating the insecticide. Gotcha. And you don't want to do it with the three in one because it has the systemic insecticide and fungicide. So you're going to be eating the uh, fungicide. I'm going to trim out some of the ground growth that's come in here. It's kind of weedy and give it a little more clean look at the bottom. The more stuff you have on the, on the bottom, you have more leaves that blow in. Uh, you have a place for bugs to kind of get in there and kind of hide. So you open it up, get their, their nesting facility out of there, out away from them. Uh, see, I'm not taking my time on this one as much as I would the other hybrid roses. Because these are not, a, they are hybrids in that, that they've been bred and they do have names and they sell them as a hybrid. But the growth pattern on this is what I'm looking at. You treat these a little bit differently uh, on, on this type of rose. They're bred to be hardy, uh, bug resistant, disease resistance is in them and everything. So uh, I'm just about done with this one. So again, I'm just, and for some of you that's, that was kind of sucking air a while ago when I was trimming that one to the ground. This would be more of the traditional rose bush that a lot of people would do. So I'm not knocking anybody. Everybody has their preferences as how they like to trim. And what but kind of bush is that one? These are the uh, earth kind, the uh, floribunda, that, that, that's earth kind, uh, carpet rose. Uh, there's like five or six different trade names. Knockouts, uh, they all have this, uh, this type of growth pattern. Now there's some of the carpet roses, they are more carpet closer to the ground. And you really would just use a weed, a weed whacker, they're thinner branches, you could even use string line trimmer and go over the top of them and, uh, and whack them back and give them a little haircut and trim them up. But again, I'm looking on these kind of sides, you know, because these are really planted a little bit too close for this variety. And uh, by the summertime, this is just kind of a screen of roses growing in here because they're, they're intertwined. See, this one's growing into this one, but these should have been spaced out another two foot from each other. But, but again, I'm showing you two styles of, tri of, of trimming these right here. And uh, equally, as big as these are, you're gonna spend some time trimming these two. I mean, either get them down to that, looking like that. And what this will do on this one, this will, this will come out with a gang-busting flush of growth around the bottom and on this and it'll fill in this will be a green mound in no time and it'll set this one back a little bit because it's got to grow all the new tissue up to have the buds and the flower form in it where this you've got some pieces of the rose here uh, these green shoots here in another three four or five weeks these will have flower buds in them as we get into spring so you'll have a little bit earlier blooming on this doing it this way but it's just a preference, you know, what you want to do. So, I want it. any more questions? So, you leave those to greater height? Well, you can. I mean, I, my deal is I always like to take them down a little bit lower. I mean, I would prefer doing it than this and having them break out with brand new flush of growth. And so, I've always got the plant invigorated in, in, in growing it. Because what's going to happen, you're going to have a lot of these little twiggy things up here that's going to die on you. And you're going to have a lot of internal dead twigs. And there's some of that, but I mean, but you know, uh, you just have to go in and weed them out. And there's that's my preference to make it more of a cut like this. Now, if I had a long, long hedge roll of this, I would probably just take a weed whacker with an actual saw blade on it that you can buy, and I'd go down through there or gas-powered hedge trimmer, 
and zip through them and, and, sh and shear them up with that. And that's one way of doing it also, uh, than, than using the actual caterpillar.